Hi guys, this video we're going to have a quick chat through your financial priorities. Something I get asked all the time by DMs, uh, people ask me to help them put things on an order of priority list. I suppose there's uh, this isn't going to be the same for everybody. As always, when it comes to personal finance, it depends on everyone's personal circumstances. However, here is a rough path. Number one is to make sure that you have an emergency fund in place. People always ask me, Paul, how much should an emergency fund be? It's usually a minimum of a thousand euro and the best place to hold that in my opinion would be the credit union. The second thing you need to do is to be debt free, short term debt. So the likes of car loans, personal loans, credit cards, etc. Not saying there are no no, you're trying to get out of debt. And the reason being, and this is really important, the reason being we don't want people in debt or to have any kind of short term debt is that we want people to have the full use of their salary when it's paid. More often than not, people get paid their salary and the biggest financial problem that we come across with clients is that they're paying way too much in loans. So therefore, they can't enjoy their own income. So the whole idea of being out of debt is not that we're trying to say that you're mismanaging your money. It's more the fact that you're not getting to use all of your money because you're probably borrowed it for something that you forget even why or you don't really know what you borrowed it for. Or you might forget unless it's a car loan, you probably still have the car. So that's the reason why we want people not to have uh, much or any short term debt to be fair. Also, just put that aside from a personal debt point of view, you're obviously going to be paying interest rates to a bank. If you look at the likes of a credit card, you're going to be paying anywhere from 14 to 22% per year, which is absolutely madness. Uh, so that's what we'd always say, an emergency fund and having stuff invested or saved for. So if you do want to have a big trip away, or you do want to do something that you use your own money rather than borrowing it and paying a bank for the privilege. After that then, pretty much everybody in the country, in my financial opinion and professional opinion, needs what's called an income protection policy. Then luckily, most of you guys out there will have an income protection policy maybe in work. So if you work for a big company, you may have a company pension plan and an income protection plan to go alongside it. If you do, that's great. If you're self-employed, you probably don't have it and you need it. Or if you're working for somebody that doesn't have an income protection plan in work, you need it. What is income protection? It does exactly what it says in the tin, it protects your income. So if you can't go to work long term for sickness or illness or a disability reason why, the life assurance company will pay up to 75% of your salary, including the state illness benefit. So that's a really good way to make sure that the house or the kind of whatever your finances are, keep on the road while something drastic goes wrong. I think this is really important. The financial plan we always talk about, or people think we always talk about the likes of pensions or savings or mortgages or you know the good things in life. A really solid financial plan will help you protect a shock. So if a shock comes towards your finances, you're going to be in a situation to weather that shock or weather that storm and keep the show on the road with income still coming in. So that's really, really important. Once you have the emergency fund, no debt and income protection in place, I think that everybody needs to have an investment account outside their emergency fund. Now again, the emergency fund goes minimum is 1,000 euro up to maybe 10 or 15,000 depending on your circumstances. But after that's looked after, you want to be investing your money. And the reason for that is that deposit accounts around the country, so whether you're looking at the likes of banks or credit unions, etc., are practically 0%. And some of them, depending on the money you have, might even be in towards negative interest rates, which I think is madness. Stocks and shares are probably the best performing asset class over the long term. Now, I'm going to stress over the long term again. We require clients to have at least a three to five year period where you don't need access to their money in order to invest. The funds I use and the accounts I use to invest my clients' money are what's called easy accessible, they're probably free, but if you do want to get them in the first couple of years, the markets may have moved negatively, and that means your money might be down. So we always want a situation where, let's use an example, let's say you have 10,000 euro to invest, and might be a situation where you might only invest 5,000 and keep 5,000 in cash. And that means if anything goes wrong, you can use your cash account and leave your investment in the background working away for you. So be very, very careful when it comes to investing. You're looking at three to five year period as a minimum. And it's always invest as a general rule of thumb to invest on a monthly basis rather than a lump sum into the markets. And that's why even clients have come to us in the past, they may have maybe three or four million. We drip feed that in over a period of time, number of years to the marketplace. But it's the same strategy for somebody that has 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000. It's the same strategy. Now, after you've looked after the investment, you want to make sure you're looking after all of your money then. And what I mean by that is making sure you're always in the lowest mortgage interest rate, making sure you know what market rates are out there for your circumstances. But guys, from a priority list point of view, this is something we go through with absolutely everybody when we do a financial plan for people. 
So if you are worried about your finances, look into how you prioritize. Again, everyone's circumstances are going to be different. You might be married, might be single, might be cohabitating, might have two incomes, one income. You might have lost a job during COVID. You might be down to one income for the first time. You might have old occupational pension plans. You may have money sitting in a deposit. You may have money sitting in an underperforming investment account or an account that has too many charges. You may have existing products in place like income protection or life assurance that needs to be reviewed to make sure you're getting the best rates and the best product out there, there in the market. So in fairness, when we do our cash flow or a financial planning consultation, this is something we discuss with everybody. And it's very rarely that we can show a client how to do something that's going to improve their overall financial well-being. As always, hope this video would add value. Please like it and share it and tag somebody that you think needs to hear it. Have a great day.